Hello, welcome. It's Phil here in the Digital DJ Tips studio with another Tuesday Tips Live. This is where we give you something new to help you become a better DJ or better DJ producer. And we've got a great show for you today because we're talking about 10 more rookie mistakes that beginner DJs make that pro DJs just don't make. And there's a backstory to this because we've, we did this a couple of weeks ago and we got so many people in the community saying, hey, what about this, what about this, what about this, what about this, that we thought we would do a whole new show and a whole new article which you can read over on digitaldjtips.com with 10 more mistakes. So look, if you're new to DJ, and these are the things you wanna be careful to be avoiding. And if you are a old hand, well look, there might be something in here that you've slipped into a bad habit with, or you might just be there ticking them off saying, I remember when I used to do that wrong. But whatever it is, I'm sure you're gonna enjoy the next 45 minutes. So if you're totally new to all of this, we are Digital DJ Tips with the leading online DJ school. The people behind Rock the Dance Floor, the best-selling book on Amazon on how to DJ. Also the people behind 25 Counten DJ courses with some of the biggest names in DJing like Jazzy Jeff, James Hype, Layback Luke, DJ Angelo. We don't just talk about these guys. These guys are our tutors. We are the place to go if you want the biggest names teaching you the best tricks. And actually talking about that, we have literally just this second, I've just this second approved an email going out to all the owners of our course that we made with James Hype. Uh, and uh, we've just added some new lessons to James Hype's course. James Hype is one of the most uh, exciting DJs out there. Uh, he's got uh, most of the things we're looking at on screen here. I literally have had five, six, seven million views on YouTube and Instagram and TikTok. This is James Hype doing some of his most famous routines. And two of his latest routines, mashing up Ed Sheeran's Bad Habits with Faithless Insomnia and Roses versus uh, Robert Miles' Children, uh, have been added to this course, to our James Hype's Mixing Skills course. And we've literally just added them. We're just telling our audience about them now. So it's great to add this new stuff, which is what we like to do. We like to keep our courses bang up to date uh, by bringing in new lessons all the time to keep them fresh. So if you're an owner of the James Hype course, go and take a look, there's new stuff in there for you. And if you're not, you can go to the digital, digitaldjtips.com website, click the courses tab at the top, and you'll see this course I just spoke about, along with all our others. So that's what we do, we're at online DJ school, but this Tuesday, session as long uh, along with our Thursday session at the same time uh, are all about giving something back, giving something free to our community. Now we're on Facebook, YouTube and Twitch. The best place to watch this is on Facebook. Why? Because if you're on Facebook and you ask questions, they'll remain underneath the recording of this lesson. So my team can get to you and answer your questions because I don't get a chance to answer every question that is asked on these live shows live. So Facebook is the best place for that because anything you say while we're on air will remain with the recording of this live show. That said, I can see everything everyone's saying across all the platforms. So if you're on another platform now, maybe try Facebook next week, but you're good to go asking questions and joining in underneath or next to the video, wherever you're watching this. And one final thing, if you're not a member, come on, you know the drill by now, digitaldjtips.com slash join. You get a free copy of the book, you get a free copy of our gear guide to stop you making bad decisions when choosing DJ gear, and it's completely free to join. So again, Afterwards, head to digitaldjtips.com slash join. Right, so today we're talking about 10 things that beginner DJs do that pros just don't, or rather 10 more things that beginner DJs do that pros just don't. Uh, and so uh, I'm gonna just count through them one by one, and we'll talk about it, and then afterwards we will go to, uh, I just peeked over there because I can see so many comments coming in on our comment cam, which is just over here uh, where the production desk is. Uh, so I'll chat to you guys and girls after we've done the 10. So let's get through them. So number one, in our list of mistakes beginners make that pros don't. Beginners often don't know their music well enough. In the old days, when we played on records, you had to know your music because a record is pretty unforgiving. It's just vinyl. There's no cue points, there's no waveforms. The best you can do is look at it like this and you can see where the track ends because there's a shiny bit and you can see the breakdowns because they're smoother. So you're literally playing a record and you're watching it in the light to see where there's a breakdown coming up and that was about it. Apart from that, you had to really know your music. You had to know your mixing and out points and you had to have listened to it enough to think, I'll play that next. Not only that, 
I know how to mix it in. And if you are someone who's just collecting loads and loads of music because you think that that's what new DJs do, rewind. It's far better to add one or two new tracks to your collection every week and then to really get to know them and listen to them hard and to mix them in and out of every other track you own and to spend the time basically learning that track off by heart before adding a couple more. You know, to play a one hour DJ set, what, 20 songs? You need 40 songs. Far better to have 40 songs that you know inside out than to have 400 where you only know 20 of them or something. So spend your time learning the music you've got rather than chasing new music all the time. One or two new tracks a week is fine. So mistake number one, not knowing your music. Uh, mistake number two, not mixing out when whatever you're doing isn't working. Now I get this, you know, you're DJing away and your uh, set has all been practiced. You've got a little list of the tunes you're gonna play in, the order you're gonna play them in, and the mix points. I've been there, I've done that. My very first DJ mix was on vinyl, but I still had it all planned out on a little piece of paper tucked under the DJ console. I was shaking that much. And if you've planned everything you're gonna do, then it's very hard to change your plan when you're a beginner because you worry and you think, well, I can't, I can't just go off piste. I'm not good enough yet. But look, if you, if you mix something in that's not working, then the best thing to do is to stop that track and get something else on. And pro DJs know how to do that. Beginner DJs, far less likely to have a go at doing that. But do, you know, do get rid of tracks that aren't working. It's, it's, there's no shame in, in adjusting the music to the people in front of you. You're not admitting you're a bad DJ or admitting defeat. And look, one of the easiest ways of mixing out of a track that isn't working is in your preparation, just put a cue point on the first point in the track where it's okay to mix out, where you know that there's gonna be a period where it's easy to mix something else in. And if it's not working, one, two, three, four, bang, hit that cue point. Track jumps to there, you can then mix something else out. It's okay to do that, and it's better than letting a three or four minute track play when no one wants to hear it, including you. So mistake number two, not mixing out when something isn't working. Mistake number three, uh, not having a technical backup in case things go wrong. Look, nowadays there is, uh, I'm just looking for mine, there is no excuse not to have some music on your phone with a lead plugged into the back of the mixer that you can hit play on should something go wrong on your DJ system. If you haven't got a technical backup in case things go wrong, and if you haven't practiced what you're gonna do if things go wrong, then you're setting yourself up not only for failure, because it does happen, but also you're just gonna be that little bit more nervous all the time, because you know you're walking on a knife edge and you know that if you fall, there's no safety net. So. For both those reasons, it's a good idea. In fact, it's, it's, it's not negotiable to know what you're gonna do if your computer crashes, your controller becomes unresponsive or whatever, and practice that thing. Your phone's good enough, uh, um, a CD to slide into the club CD player and hit play on where you've mixed some music on it, whatever, but just think about it and make sure you've got a backup. Number four not interacting with the crowd. It is again, utterly forgivable, especially for beginners, because it's so hard and it's so nerve wracking getting up in front of other people and you've planned everything and you're busy trying to do it and you're trying to remember everything. And even though you've remembered everything, you think, have I forgotten something? Have I forgotten something? And all the time, while these things are going through your head, your face looks like this. Now I've got news for you. That face doesn't start parties. The face that starts parties is the one that is interacting with the crowd. And I don't mean just, you know, surfing on an inflatable or throwing cakes at them. I just mean checking out who's in front of you, smiling at them, giving a thumbs up to people you know, giving a wave to people, looking like this when something great happens in the track and you spot someone else nodding away. Crowd interaction is hard when you're very nervous and it's hard when you're concentrating. And so it's okay to fake that a little bit. It's okay to think, right, smile at someone, and then back to feeling nervous. If you do that two or three times in every track, you've done it 60 times in an hour long DJ set, and that can be faked, and it's a lot better than not ever making eye contact with everyone. And I get it, I've done bad mixes where I've literally gone like this, and I've pretended to be looking at a record box or tying my shoelace or something, but really I've been so embarrassed at what I just did that I've, I've needed to hide from the people looking at me for a little while. I'm a professional DJ. If I feel like that sometimes, trust me, 
I get what it feels like when you don't want eye contact, you don't want people looking at you, you hate it, you're prickling all over, it's horrible, but you gotta get past it. And one of the ways of getting past it is faking it at the beginning, and then as you, as you bed into your set, you'll be more relaxed and you'll be more comfortable with the interaction. But you've got to interact with your crowd. Your job is to lead the party. You can't lead the party uh, if you are too scared to even look at the people who are partying. So not interacting with the crowd is a big beginner mistake. And number five in our beginner mistakes, partying too hard. Now this is something that I'm, I'm gonna generalize that younger DJs, and I remember when I was in my early 20s DJing professionally for the first time, tend to do more than older DJs. And look, it's not the opposite of not interacting with the crowd. Some people might, you know, have a few drinks before going on the decks because it makes it easier for them to interact with the crowd. But I don't mean that. I just mean the inability to separate the partying, which probably got you into this in the first place, from the job of playing music. And to make it even simpler, the inability to separate the partying from the music. The only thing that's gonna keep you going as a DJ for years and decades is the music. The partying is gonna be literally, at the very best, uh, something that you're dealing with. At the worst, it's gonna wipe you out and you're not gonna be able to carry on doing this as any kind of meaningful hobby, career, whatever. I have a friend who's been a very um, well-known uh, and, well, full-on full professional, but a very well-known DJ for decades. <coughs> Excuse me, and he said to me, I have to have a beer or two just because I'm twice the age of the dance floor nowadays. But that's it. And I think that's about right. And if you want a party, that's great. I'm not here to tell you how to live your life. Just save it till after your DJ set. Give the DJ the respect that it requires for you to do a good job of it and try not to party too hard. So there's the first five. Not knowing your music, not mixing out when stuff isn't working, uh, not having a technical backup, uh, not interacting with the crowd, uh, and partying too hard. They're the first five of our 10 mistakes that beginner DJs make that pro DJs don't. Uh, we're gonna have a little chat now. I'm gonna head over to the comment cam and we're gonna get some of your feedback on this and some of the, the interactions that no doubt are piling in for me to look at. And we're gonna come back for the second half and give you five more of these things. I do have to tell you as well that at the end of today's show, I'm gonna be telling you how you can win one of three one-on-one -on -one DJ lessons, not with me, but with, that would be good enough, right? But with DJ Jazzy Jeff. Three Digital DJ Tips community members are going to win a one-hour DJ lesson in person, or at least it's going to be online through the uh, power of the internet, no doubt, because uh, that's the way it is in this COVID age, isn't it? But you are gonna get a one-on-one -on -one DJ lesson with DJ Jazzy Jeff himself. You cannot buy a prize like that, and we've got three of them to give away. So at the end of today's show, I'm gonna tell you exactly how you can win one of those three. I told you we were the biggest DJ school. I told you we had the best tutors. So I'll tell you that at the end. But meanwhile, let's head over and have a chat with some of uh, the wonderful people chatting in the community about our five errors so far, and then we'll come on and do the next five. So hello, people. Uh, it's uh, lovely to see you again. Uh, this is, if you are new to this, this is where we do this, uh, the chat stuff. Um, so Tom says, I was a DJ for the first time this weekend at a, bar at a birthday. Um, uh, I think I'm going to take every one of these mistakes. Oh, Tom, I'm sure you haven't done all of these mistakes, and I'm sure you had a great time at your gig. Uh, Lee says, I've, e I've been at an event where the DJ looked bored. Uh, there was me thinking I'd love to have been playing his set. His lack of enthusiasm transferred to the crowd. Lee, actually the same DJ that gave me that advice about one or two beers is probably enough before a gig, said to me once, the job of a DJ is to transfer energy from DJ booth to the crowd. And the energy I see being transferred from too many DJ booths to the crowd, the emotion I see being transferred is just boredom. And you've hit the nail on the, on the head there, Lee. A lack of enthusiasm will transfer to the crowd or to flip it around the other way, no enthusiasm means you haven't got anything to give to the crowd. So it's good to see that you uh, have picked out that as an error. Uh, so techno beats, I'll be trying to endure number four soon. Introvert here. You know, so many DJs are introverts. For so many DJs interacting with the crowd is not easy. You know, we get into DJing. I got into DJing because I didn't, I was, I was a very insecure teenager and I didn't want to go to the same places that my schoolmates, especially the school girls in my year at school went. 
I couldn't be in the same place. I was too nervous. I was too, I didn't know what to say to people. I thought I'd make a fool of myself. So the way I managed to get out, meet girls, do the stuff that is meant to come easy to teenagers was by playing the records, by having the gear, by setting up this wall between me and everyone else where I could hide in the corner and play records and then maybe, if I was lucky, get to know a few people and, and, and break through the horrible social uh, inadequacy, uh, hesitancy that I had as a teenager. So I get it. Being introvert is, is, is a trait of DJs, but we do need to get past that. You know, one thing to remember is that we're not the only people feeling like we're not sure we should be there, we're not enjoying ourselves yet. Uh, and so it, your job is to lead other people out of that feeling rather than to be wallowing in it yourself. Um, so um, hello, Alex. Hello to Paul. Uh, Lou says hello. Hello. I hope you're doing well as well, Lou. Rob just says this advice is great. Thank you. Uh, can you remember that far back? Roger, you're cheeky. Uh, Benedict says, I always try to smile when I DJ and look at the crowd, even though I might be nervous. And I think you're exactly right there. Um, Reza says, is it cool to be talking on the mic uh, as a DJ to interact with the crowd? That just depends upon the gig. There's no right or wrong there. Uh, but even the most underground, cool and trendy DJs, have, they know how to get on the mic when they have to. It's this fallacy that DJs never get on the mic. So, you know, some DJs never do it. Everyone knows how to do it, trust me. Uh, hello to the Dude Club. Uh, so um, so uh, this is a great point from back in the day. Terrell says, the width of a Technics needle shell is an eight bar count. So what uh, Torelli is saying is as the, as the record, as the needle moves towards the middle of the record as you're playing it, eight bars is about the width of the cartridge, but that depends whether you're playing at 33 or 45 and whether you're playing an album or a, or, or a decent 12 inch pressing. But I do know what you're saying there, Torell. Thanks for sharing that. Um, there's lots of people asking questions which are not related to today's topic. That's absolutely fine. But if you are, then come back on Thursday and we'll answer them then. Um, so um, Eric says, it's difficult for me to interact with the crowd as well. I put a lot of energy into making sure the mix goes well. It's a good idea to force yourself to look up a few times per song. Yeah, force yourself to do it. It doesn't matter what you're feeling inside. No one else sees that. They see this. So force yourself to interact, smile. Um, they don't know that you're doing it because you told yourself you've got to. They just see the DJ smiling at them and they feel better and that's the whole point. Um, no one knew me before I started DJing, says Romaldo. Maybe it took the third party to realize it was the same person DJing. Well, there we go. You know, people are not looking at you as much as you think that they maybe are. Uh, so hello to uh, Mikel in California. Um, so Chrissy says, I hate DJs who just play to themselves. Stay in your bedrooms. Uh, that is a good point. Playing something that the crowd wants to dance to is probably a bigger part of DJing than some DJs. Uh, admit. Uh, the dude says, as a radio host, the secret to interacting is be yourself. Don't try to impress. Being honest is impressive. Well, I hope th that comes across in what we do here at Digital DJ Tips because we, we agree with you there. You know, there's no point trying to be anything you're not because people see through it. Uh, just because you're on the radio or in the DJ booth, it doesn't mean that, you know, the normal rules of being a, uh, a genuine human don't apply, right? Uh, so, um, well, Max, I hope that all the advice we're giving you is helping you. But if you're looking for advice on uh, how to play your first DJ set, then the best I can say is get the book. You know, I've told you about our book already. Uh, our book is our guide to the five big areas of DJ. Uh, it uh, is yours on that link, digitaldjtips.com slash join. There's the book. I'll give you a PDF download of this and I talk you through everything you need to know to get started in DJing. Seriously, if you don't know where to start, you want to have a go at this, that is your starting point. Uh, let's have one or two more hellos, then we'll get back and we'll do our final five and then I'll tell you how you can win one of three one-on-one -on -one DJ lessons with Jazzy Jeff, the man himself. Uh, so, um, Rookie mistake number one, doing the things when you point at the decks like a wally says you don't like my music. Doing that thing where you point at the decks like a wally. Oh, I don't think I've ever done that, but uh, you've obviously seen people doing that one. Um, uh, and um, one or two more before we move any further. Uh, Craig says, hi, Phil, I've tuned in, but I won't comment further in case of being controversial. Craig, this is a big broad church of friends. You comment if you want to, my friend. Uh, and finally, before we go back and continuing, uh, DJ Feta was just agreeing, mix out of it if it's not working. There's no time to hang around yet. If it's worth mixing out of a track, it's worth doing it straight away. Right. 
Let's carry on. If you have just joined us, we're talking about 10 things. We've already done five. You can watch the replay of this on YouTube and Facebook to get the first five. 10 things that DJs uh, do when they're beginners that they don't do by the time they are pros. We're trying to tell you these so you don't make the same mistakes. Uh, and uh, well, let's carry on. So number six, taking every request. You are not a jukebox. And so when you have a queue of people saying, will you play this, will you play that, will you play this, will you play this? Can you play it soon? I'm going soon. Oh, it's, it's my birthday. Um, um, oh, I've just arrived, so I didn't hear you play that. Um, look, these people are trying it on because they want to hear these songs. Or even worse, they're just testing you to see if you've got the music, or they're testing you, and I don't want to sound cynical, to see if you're daft enough to play something that's utterly, utterly bad. And this is normally the boys who aren't dancing. They'll sit in the corner saying, I wonder if he's got insert obscure album track from the 1980s here. I'll go and ask. And off they go and they say, oh, can you play this for me? And you think, oh, I better play that because it's what people want. Look, you are ceasing to be a DJ. And one definition of a DJ is someone who's heard more music than everyone else in the room. You're ceasing to be the DJ whose job it is to lead the music and you're becoming a jukebox and not a very good one at that because at least with the jukebox, people have got to pay to hear the track. With requests, they can just come up and whether their intentions are good or not, just say something and then you play it. Look, don't play every request. They are requests. They're designed to give you an idea of what people might want. Uh, and another great rule with requests is look at the person asking and ask yourself two things. One, have I seen that person dancing today? And two, are they female? And if they tick both boxes, maybe listen quite carefully to what they're saying because girls who are dancing tend to suggest music that more girls will continue to dance to. Anyone else, think very hard before you play those tracks and you don't have to play them straight away either. You can wait. So scribble things down, say, yeah, I might get to it in a bit, but don't play every request. Pros don't and you shouldn't either. Now, of course, if you're a touring DJ, if you're a big name producer, if you're a festival DJ on the main stage, you don't have this issue, but 90% of DJs do have this issue. So. Don't play them all. But number seven, a big mistake that some beginners make who think, no, I'm, I'm a serious DJ, I'm not a jukebox, is they never play requests. That's nearly as bad as not playing requests because sometimes if it's a girl and she's been dancing with her friends, the request is a very, very good one and you might not have thought to play that track and it might be a great track to play, so why not? And other times you might just be having a bad night. You know, you've done your best to get the music right, you've done your best for the crowd, but they're a different crowd to what you're used to and nothing you try is working. And then thinking hard about some of the music that's being requested and maybe testing one or two of those tunes might just be enough to kickstart the dance floor and push you in the right direction to then do your DJ job and pick the right music for the rest of the night. So look, there's two big errors there. Not playing requests ever and playing them all the time thinking you have to. Somewhere down the middle and depending upon the kind of DJ you are and the kind of gigs you play, whereabouts down the middle is going to differ is the right place to be for 90% of DJs when it comes to requests. Rookie mistake number eight is not having a folder, a playlist, a crate, an idea of some emergency floor fillers. Because we all have gigs where nothing we try is working. And to have those tracks that you know, when you drop that track, you're gonna get some dance floor attention is almost like having a technical backup, having your phone or something so that you can get some music playing if the, if the gear goes down. If the gear goes down, you've got an idea what you're gonna do next. But what if the music isn't working? You ought to have an idea what you're gonna do next there as well. So having some emergency floor fillers in a folder, ready to go with a cue point at the big point in the trap that you know is gonna get the dance floor interested is a great idea. Now those tracks are gonna differ where you are in the world, kind of crowds you play to, and as your gigs build up, as you've played two or three events and five and 10 events, you're gonna know the tracks that work for you. So I can't tell you what tracks to put in there, but having emergency floor fillers put to one side that you know you can rely on if things aren't working out is a good idea. So spend some time putting a little folder together of a few of those. Error number nine that beginners make that pros don't tend to make is look, don't be too hard on yourself. So many beginners beat themselves up because the gig didn't go well. They beat themselves up because they made a couple of bad transitions or they made a load of bad, bad transitions. They beat themselves up because someone at the end said that was rubbish, didn't enjoy that. 
There's two things here. One, to survive in any environment where you're performing to other people, you need to, to get a thick skin because this is gonna happen. But number two, if you've played 150, 200, 500 gigs, as pro DJs have, what happens at any individual gig is not really of very much concern. Of course you wanna do a good job, but hey, it's one in 500. But if you've only played like two gigs, what happens in either of those gigs means an awful lot. You know, if you're on gig number one and it doesn't go the way you want it to, you might think every gig's gonna be like that and that DJing's not for you. If you're on gig number four and you have a great gig, you might think, wow, I've cracked DJing. DJing is now something I can do. I've played four gigs and that was amazing. I'm there. And then gig number five goes wrong. You're back down into the being really hard on yourself. This doesn't happen to pro DJs because one, they've got a thick skin and two, they've played enough gigs to know that individual gigs only count to a certain degree. You are not in control, especially at the beginning of your DJ career, where you're not being put on the main stage, where people haven't come to hear you. You're not in control of whether your gigs are gonna go well or not. You, you can do so much, but that's all. You can't control the people coming through the door or whether anyone's going to. You can't control whether the gig you've managed to blag is being run by an out and out rogue who's gonna give you real grief all night for not playing soft rock at whatever time of night because it was the only gig you could get. You know, there's so many things that can affect a beginner's gigs that don't affect pros. Any good pro put into some of the gigs that beginners have to play might have a bad night as well. So look, it's not always your fault. So if things go wrong, Try not to be hard on yourself. Try and say, if I was a pro and I'd already pay, played for the last 10 years, I'd done 500,000 gigs, what would, what would I do? And be like that. And number 10 of our mistakes that beginner DJs make that pro DJs don't, not being nice to people. You know, being nice to people is not gonna get you DJing success. But I'll tell you something, I've never met a successful DJ who isn't nice to people. And that means everyone, from the doorman at the front of the nightclub to the bathroom attendant, to everyone who comes up to them, no matter what mood they're in, no matter what time of the night, no matter what stupid thing those people are saying, to the promoters, to the other DJs, to the person who's booked them. I've never met a pro DJ who isn't nice to all those people. Why? Because pro DJs realize that people get booked because other people know them and like them. Knowing other people comes with the territory, comes with networking, comes with marketing, comes with all the stuff that DJs have to do to get to that level. But being nice to people, in other words, being liked, that comes from the way you decide to, to be with other people. And if you need even more convincing that being nice is a good default way to be as a DJ, we talked about it earlier. The whole point of DJing is transferring emotion and energy from the DJ booth to the dance floor. And people can see if you're a nice person. People can see if you're someone that other people are enjoying being around. Or conversely, they can see if you're arrogant and you don't want to know and you're being rude to people and you're shouting and you're huffing around. People don't want to see that. They want to see, they want to know they're with someone who they like. And if they, they know the DJ seems to be a decent person, they're going to enjoy the night a lot more and you're gonna get a better gig out of it and a better reputation and you're gonna become a pro DJ much quicker. So as I said, you know, being nice won't make you a pro, but there's very, very few pro DJs who aren't consciously nice to people. They've made a decision that they're going to be, no matter what mood they're in, they're gonna be ultra nice to everyone around them. So number 10, be nice. Let's recap them quickly, then we'll have a final chat and then I'll tell you how you can win one of three exclusive to Digital DJ Tips members lessons with DJ Jazzy Jeff himself. Number one, beginner mistakes, not knowing your music. Number two, not mixing out tracks when they're not working. Number three, not having a technical backup if things go wrong. Number four, not interacting with the crowd. Number five, partying too hard. Number six, not taking requests. Number seven, taking every, uh, every request. Number eight, not having a, a folder of emergency floor fillers if things go wrong. Number nine, being too hard on yourself. And number 10, not being nice to people. And by the way, this whole list came from you guys and girls underneath, in the comments underneath, the last list of 10 DJ errors that rookies make that pro DJs don't. So if you haven't seen either of those lists, head over to the Digital DJ Tips website and scroll down and you can see the 10 mistakes beginners make that pro DJs don't. Let me show you that on the screen. 
And it's the 10 mistakes beginner DJs make that pro DJs don't. And you'll find that currently on the Digital DJ Tips site uh, down in the corner above the Jazzy Jeff advert. Uh, and then the other one, the newer, the newer one, uh, is the one with this stop sign uh, to the right of the big advert there. 10 more mistakes beginner DJs make that pros don't. So if you want to go and have a look at these afterwards, they're all on the Digital DJ Tips website. So we're going to talk about this in a minute, but I did say I would tell you how you can win one of the three exclusive to Digital DJ Tips lessons with DJ Jazzy Jeff, and there is how you do it. You go to the digitaldjtips.com homepage, you click on win a one-on-one -on -one DJ lesson with DJ Jazzy Jeff, and you will go to a page where Jazzy Jeff announces his course, which we're currently making with him, uh, How to DJ Right, which is coming out uh, very soon uh, from us here at Digital DJ Tips. So there is a course coming with DJ Jazzy Jeff. Uh, and also just by showing your interest in the course, by putting your email address down here, you can uh, be entered into the draw to win one of those three DJ lessons, exclusive one-on-one -on -one lessons with Jazzy Jeff. So. Let's end off today. I get to sit down again now. This is like the green room. This is like backstage uh, chatting with you guys and girls. If you've enjoyed it today, that's the end of the tutorials, although we always have so much fun now talking about it. And there's no doubt going to be some gems in all the comments I'm about to share. So if you have got another 10 minutes, hang around. Uh, but if you've enjoyed it today uh, and you've got to go, thank you very much for joining us. Remember, come and join Digital DJ Tips at that URL to get the book and the gear guide. We'd love to have you as our latest member, but thank you for coming. If you're still with me for the uh, the extra, the behind the scenes, the uh, the interaction uh, that carries on as we end these things, uh, good. I'm glad you're still with me. Thank you for uh, being here. Well, Paul is. Paul says, I'm really enjoying this. Um, so uh, don't ask for a tip. Let them give you a tip, says William. Tips are a weird one because here in Europe, we're not so kind of tip heavy as you are over there in the US. So I think it um, depends where you are, I think, on tips. Uh, so this is a great one from Pri, and I think Pri Pri's one of our tutors. Pri will not mind me saying at all that, uh, you know, he he's he's on my side of it when it comes to introverted, really, behind the decks more than uh, more than jumping up and squirting shaving foam at people and stuff. Uh, but Pri says, pretend there is a fire on the other side of the dance floor and point to it like firefighters put it out. Always look like you're engaging with the crowd. I mean, that is a great tip there. It's a great actual tactic for dealing with not knowing what to do to interact with the crowd. Pretend there's a fire, point to it. I love it. Brilliant. Thank you for that, Pri. Uh, so, um, uh, Amri, Amri, Amri says, I haven't made a debut yet. I'm thinking of buying the cheapest gear just to start. I've been only practicing with Tractor 3 on my PC. I feel like I shouldn't get used to it like that. Um, this is not really about you know, beginner mistakes, but I guess buying the wrong gear would be a beginner mistake. Uh, I think buying any old any old DJ controller to get going, you know, reasonable one, uh, is a good way of starting because you're going to always want to replace it down the line with something that is more in line with the kind of DJing you want to do and you won't know that at the beginning. And you'll probably end up keeping the first controller you buy as a backup anyway. So I'd say, you know, if you're a Tractor user, a Tractor Control S2 is a great place to start uh, and then take it from there. So it's all right to buy something that's not the most expensive as your first device there, uh, Amri. Um, so, okay, uh, John says, I've been a DJ for over 35 years and I think uh, always learning is key. Well, that's a brilliant piece of advice and I, I would, certainly wouldn't uh, disagree with you there at all. Uh, so let's um, see what you're saying about some of these further uh, Further um, tips, uh, Krampus, I like this one. I'm always more engaged with DJs who display energy and creativity rather than someone who's trying to mix perfectly. A small hiccup is acceptable if they are entertaining. I agree completely. People want to know about the fact that you're doing it live. They want to see, uh, you know, laid back Luke, one of our tutors is, is really big on this. He's like, you know, it's okay for people to realize you're DJing, that's all right. You're a DJ, you're not a machine, so it's all right. You know, it's like exciting car drivers. Don't mind going up the curb every now and then or skidding around corners. It's fun. The car still gets where it's going, but the journey is more exciting. And um, so, you know, being human in your DJing is all right. Um, Martin says, I think that you can still play the best music. People are still going to see you. So if you look like stressed out or completely bored when you're doing your mix, people see and do react to this. Like it or not, your mood is going to be reflected by the crowd. And I agree, you know, two DJs can play exactly the same set, but the one who's obviously enjoying it and interacting with the crowd is going to have a very different night to the one who isn't. Um, 
You don't like my music says, I preferred the days when the DJ was in a dark corner out of sight. The superstar DJ phenomenon was too bad for the scene in my books. Well, Paul Van Dyke once said the DJ used to be the geek in the corner, uh, the only person who could afford to buy the records. But that's all changed and we can't change that. But I do know what you're saying there. You don't like my music. Um, when you decide to put yourself out there, no other sign or you. It will come. Just keep working on your craft, says Paul. Indeed, it will. Um, so uh, Nachi Kate says, I have a T-shirt which says, I'm a DJ, not a jukebox. Yeah, but don't go too far the other way. Um, so um, I hate requests, says Stu C. 99 times out of 100, they're woeful. Well, don't play them then. One time out of 100 in your scene with the people you're with, DJ Stu C, it will be helpful. But yeah, I get you. You know, if we say, what's the biggest thing you hate about DJing? Request is always, always at the top of the list. Um, so Pre says you're a DJ, not a waiter. Take requests, not orders. Uh, and again, Pre, uh, a man with a lot of wisdom. So thank you for that. Um, so if a lot of people are asking for tracks, then it could be a sign that people aren't enjoying your music. That can often be true as well. If you can get the girls to turn up, you're all set. Again, it's a, a rule. It's a, it's a, it's a um, generalisation, of course it is, but you know, it is a generalization for a reason. Uh, bad transition, says Martin, a part of the pleasure is you try out new stuff. Indeed. Uh, so Larry says, as a radio personality of five decades plus, who can uh, and has club DJ, when asked or requested, I tell people I play what I'm known for on my radio show. I get a few live gigs, but the ones I do get, people know what I play. They know the genre I represent, and I stick with that. Well, you're lucky to be that person. And I mentioned you and your ilk, didn't I? I said people who are very well known for what they do, personality DJs, people who are at the top of their game, guest DJs at big events, don't have to play requests. I agree, Larry. But even in your case, if someone who is one of your biggest fans comes up and requests a song that is completely up your street, uh, then listening to them and saying, you know what, great idea, yeah, I'll play that. You might, you might have been going to play it anyway, even if you're going to play a track anyway. Telling someone that, great idea, didn't think of that, thank you very much, I'll play that for you, sends them back to the crowd with their shoulders back and a great vibe. And it's free, it's not cost anything to do that. Humble uh, and, uh, you know, and listening to people does, um, does win the day, in my view, uh, a lot of the time. Uh, so one or two more. This is when we're talking about the not being so hard on yourself. Um, plenty of bad gigs is fuel for creating backups, workarounds and creative outlets, says Paul. Uh, I love that as well. Uh, and um, Dagmar just says, hey, thanks, Phil. I, I needed to hear that. Well, you're very welcome, Dagmar. Um, so... Um, Right, I'm just looking at a lot of you. Thank you very, very much for commenting here, people. You know, it's, it's so lovely to see so many of you commenting, but a lot of you are asking questions that are not related to what we're talking about here, and that's fine. Just come back on Thursday at the same time, and we'll deal with those then. Uh, and uh, DJ Daz says, 30 plus years, and I'm still too hard on myself. It's hard. I know I agree, but, you know, I'm saying try not to be. Um, and uh, Martin says, amen to this, Phil. Uh, Feta says, be nice to everyone. Um, Lou, this is very true, Lou, this is wisdom. I'd rather play for an unknown crowd than for family and friends. When I'm playing for family and friends, it's too personal. They request so many songs during the night and I feel like a jukebox and less like a DJ. Exhausting. Uh, I know what you're saying there indeed. Um, all right, people, I think we're done here for today. Uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to call it a day there, but thank you very much everyone who's joined in. Uh, and I'm sorry I couldn't get to you all, but remember if you've been on Facebook, uh, your requests, sorry, your requests, your requests for me to interact with you, your comments will be underneath afterwards and I'll be able to see them and we'll be able to get back to you there. Um, remember if you're interested in getting the, let's go back over here to do this bit, if you're interested in winning one of those lessons with DJ Jazzy Jess, Jazzy Jeff, then head over to the Digital DJ Tips website, Click on the advert and you'll land on this page here uh, where Jazzy Jeff himself is requesting your email address so he can let you know about the course we're making with him, which will be going live very soon. Uh, and also so uh, he can enter you into the draw to win one of the three DJ lessons with Jazzy Jeff that three Digital DJ Tips members will be winning. The biggest DJs, the best course is right here. Thank you very much for joining us today. I hope you found value here. Uh, do uh, be up, become our latest member if you have. We'd love to have you, digitaldjtips.com slash join. But for me here in the studio and from all the team, get good, 
get out there, make the moments, and I will see you at the same time on Thursday. Until next time, bye-bye.